Yo, what's up guys, Nash here coming at you with a brand new video and today we're uncovering my first store and why it was so bad. So I get a lot of you guys that message me on Instagram, which is awesome. Love, you know, commenting back to you guys and, and you know, helping you guys out. But a lot of you guys are asking, you know, hey, my I'm on my first store, I built it like two days ago and I ran an ad and it's not making any sales. Like, what's the deal? Um, so I just wanted to let you guys know that I actually had like three, maybe four stores live before I actually made any sales. Um, well, I think I made like two sales, but it wasn't really anything worthwhile. So I want to go over what my mistakes were in those stores and how you can kind of avoid the mistakes that I made so you can actually start making some money um, off of the uh, the advertisements that you run in your store. So I wish I had the store that I could show you guys. I, I so wish, but I shut it down because I didn't want to pay 29 bucks a month. But uh, this is actually the Facebook page for it. As you can see, there's like literally nothing on it. Um, but I had some super dope designs. Okay, so um, I had like this shoot film. It was a uh, it was called Set Swag. It was for filmmakers. Um, it was kind of like apparel for filmmakers. So it was print on demand stuff. Um, but I had these like really cool designs, like shoot film. Um, I actually have some of them here, like this one or uh, this one. This is my favorite. We accept major. Uh, credit cards, Discover Visa, Apple Pay, but we don't expect it, or we don't accept exposure. We'll look at there, my exposure ain't worth shit. So this is, uh, you know, this sort of vibes with filmmakers because I don't know if any of you guys can relate, but a lot of times people ask you to uh, do work for free for exposure or for credit, um, which a lot of people don't like doing. So, uh, you know, this kind of vibes with it. And then uh, you know, shot list, which, uh, if you don't know what a shot list is, basically it's like the, the camera angles that you want. Um, but this was a sort of a funny take on it. So anyway, so those were shirts that I thought were, were like sick, like, dude, I would wear those, but, um, obviously they didn't work and I'm going to tell you why. So mistakes that killed my first store. The, the first one, um, is that, uh, it's sort of the, the build it and they will come mentality. Okay. So. Um, I had the mentality that if I built like a really dope store with really dope designs that I liked, then people will come because you know, it's cool. But that's simply not the case. Like um, I, I expected traffic to come to me, but they don't. Like you, you literally have to advertise to people that actually want the thing that you have. And the best way to do that is by actually finding products that are kind of proven to sell that, that people like. I thought if I built it, they will come, but that's not the case. So the second thing, the second mistake that I had was, uh, sorry, I'm looking at my notes here, is that I had no audience research. Okay, so uh, what do I mean by that? Essentially, I thought, because I was in the filmmaking industry at the time, this was back in like July, I was doing, uh, I was making movies, like feature films that, are, that were in theaters. Um, and I was constantly around people that were on that. I was, uh, and I just thought that there was a lot of people that are interested in that. Um, it turns out that there's not as many people as, as I thought um, that, that are necessarily interested in that. So uh, it's, it's pretty interesting. I didn't do any audience research. I didn't see um, you know, if there's people actually buying this stuff. And looking back, I actually researched it recently. There's, there's really like not a huge audience for, um, for people that, that want to buy these like set shirts or whatever. Um, there's definitely a few, but it's hard to make a scalable business because there's only a few, right? So. I did no audience research. Number three is that um, uh, I didn't find hot products. Okay, so this kind of goes in with the um, the whole no audience research thing is I didn't find hot products. Generally, if I'm doing a print on demand store now, which I talked about in a previous video, I'll go ahead and find products that are sort of hot, designs that are hot, sayings that are hot, and then I'll um, sort of design based off of that. But what I was doing is making my own designs that I thought were funny, that were cool, whatever. Um, but they had no track record of, of being able to be sold. And because I didn't know what I was doing at the time, it's very difficult to sell a product like that. So um, I didn't find, there we go, didn't find hot, hot products. And if you're doing drop shipping, obviously this would be like finding hot products that are currently selling right now on AliExpress, which I can show you how to do uh, real quick. So I'll just go to AliExpress. So let's take, for example, this rose. I have no idea why this just popped up because I don't remember ever looking at it, but um, so it has 1,029 orders. Seems like a lot, right? But when you scroll down, uh, you can actually go to, yeah, so this area where the transaction history, you can see they sold one today, uh, February 5th, I'm filming in advance. Um, you know, one, two, three, whatever on February 2nd, a few on January 1st. Like, 
you know, it's not really selling right now. So yeah, it has a lot of orders, but it's not selling right now. So you want to find products that I would say at least have an entire page filled with one day. Um, ideally, maybe like two to three or more, uh, because that means it's selling right now. So if you haven't found a hot product, definitely keep looking. Don't try to keep marketing the same thing that's not working because you're just going to end up wasting money and uh, it's not a good situation. So uh, definitely go ahead and find some hot products. Uh, number four is I didn't know uh, Facebook marketing, okay? Because I was marketing this all on Facebook and literally had no idea what I was doing. Um, so I <laughs> I watched a few YouTube videos and I was like, sweet, this, this should probably be easy. Um, so I, I did this targeting and I think the targeting ended up being like 15,000 people in it. So it was like super small, which goes back to the audience research uh, part. Um, but yeah, so I didn't know the marketing, so I was, I was marketing to these 15,000 people, nothing was hitting, I ended up spending like $200 because again, I didn't know what I was doing, um, but I was like determined to make it work. I was like, yeah, I just need to spend more money and eventually it'll hit. Uh, that's not the case. Uh, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work and cut it. So uh, yeah, if you don't know Facebook marketing, definitely start out with Instagram if you can. Not every niche, like the niche that I was in doesn't didn't have any Instagram influencers, so I just switched it up, did something different. But um, yeah, if you uh, if you don't know Facebook marketing, I would suggest not starting with that, especially if you don't have much of a budget because it's very hard to make back your ROI um, fast on, on Facebook. Eventually, yeah, you can and, and much more, but in initially it's very difficult to make back your ROI. So um, yeah, so that's why. And number five is I had no email marketing. Okay, so um, actually for, for this website, for the SetSwag one, I, I didn't uh, even attempt email marketing. Like, I don't even think I had a form on there. Um, but then another one I did, it was called like Fight Back for Elephants. I did, I sold like these elephant trinket uh, necklaces and like random stuff. But um, yeah, so I had some email marketing on there and I was sending traffic and people were like signing up to the email list. I had like 120, 150 people on the email list, but I literally never did anything with it. And it's so embarrassing because like I had that many people on the list, but I literally did nothing with them. I didn't send any follow-up emails, like nothing. So if I were to do like email marketing again today, um, I would do like what I showed you in, in a few videos back with the email marketing series is I would send them a, a follow-up series, okay? If you don't have a follow-up series in place, you're leaving so much money on the table and I didn't realize that uh, when, I, when I first started that store. So find that hot product and once you do, make sure you get that email sequence in place because it literally accounts for, at least in my case, it accounts for about 30% of my business. So if you don't have that, then it's just it just makes it very difficult uh, to go ahead and actually start making some sales. So um, yeah, so basically make sure that uh, you do your audience research, find a hot product, know uh, what your marketing is and know it well. Um, if you have to buy a course, great. If you have to look for hours on YouTube, fine, that's great. Whatever you have to do to learn how to do this stuff, go ahead and learn how to do it before you get started so you don't waste money. And then lastly, have that email follow-up series and actually build it out um, to, to be good. Um, actually guys, I, I have one more that I thought about here and that's time management. Um, I spent so much time just like, Fixing logos, fixing the website, making it look perfect, doing like awesome t-shirt designs, at least that I thought were awesome. Um, I spent so much time, like maybe two weeks setting up this store, which I mean, it's just a lot of time. There's, there's sometimes where I set stores up within a few hours um, nowadays. So what I would recommend doing is, is get that store up as quickly as possible, get those designs, get uh, the products, if you're doing drop shipping, whatever it is, up as fast as you possibly can so you can start testing with ads and ad copies and different audiences and all that stuff so you can eventually find what works. So then instead of spending two weeks doing the store, you spend maybe like two days doing the store and then that extra 12 days marketing and you already made back your ROI and know what works. Um, so it's just about speed of Im implementation. Make sure you, you figure out what's an important necessary factor and what's an unnecessary but like sort of important but you can put it on the back burner type of factor for your website and kind of list those out. So, so guys, hopefully you learned a lot from my mistakes from my first stores and there are things that I learned from but hopefully you can learn from them without having to spend the money. Uh, at least that's the point of this video. So if you liked it, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below as well as the notification bell to be notified as soon as we drop the next video. Also, if you like the video, go ahead and leave me a like. Smash that like button, why don't you? And then, uh, you know, leave me a comment of what you wanna see in future videos. And we'll be sure to make it. Also, we're almost at 2K. Actually, we might be at 2K right now. I don't know, I'm filming this in advance. But uh, 
thank you guys so much for everything that you've done. Thank you for supporting the channel. Really do appreciate you guys so much. So uh, thank you, and I will see you guys in the next video. I need you in the morning. Oh, oh.